you run an online business of any kind and you're still using tools like monday.com, Asana, or Notion to manage your workflow, I'm really sorry to say, but you're kind of wasting your time. And I'm about to show you why. Now that's not to say those tools aren't useful. Everybody has their own preferences and those tools have lots of great functions and features. But today I'm gonna to show you a tool that in my opinion is better than all of them combined. And it kind of is all of them combined in a weird way. And that tool is called Airtable. Now you might've heard about Airtable before and you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, it's just a database. What's so special about it? Or maybe you're in a scenario where you haven't heard about it before, but you're just looking for an all-in-one tool to manage your business. Basically a home base for everything. Finances, CRM, sales, task management, whatever it might be. In which case, you're in the right place. Now Airtable is basically what would happen if Google Sheets, Notion, Asana, ClickUp, Google Drive, all just had one massive baby. At its core, it's meant to be a database and it's most similar, at least from the outside, to Google Sheets. But in this video, I'm about to show you that it's so, so much more than that. If you know how to go about using Airtable the right way, the systems that you can build for your business are basically limitless. Not to mention, it can save you a crap ton of money as well. Instead of having to pay for Pipedrive and ClickUp and Notion and all these separate software, most things that you need internally for your business can just be built straight into Airtable. A great example of this is my own content and marketing system that is built exactly customized just the way I like it and manages my entire content workflow. I'm able to create AI generations, short form scripts, emails, tweets using fine tuned models that I create. I'm able to track the progress of various pieces of content for YouTube, shorts, everything like that. I'm able to store various resources, content guides, lead magnets, everything all inside of one base and one beautiful looking interface. So it's almost like you could build your own internal software solutions that are specific to your business. Now Airtable to most people can look pretty intimidating from the outside. There's lots of different features. It can be a lot to the eyes, but it's actually a lot more simple and easy to grasp than you think. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know your way around it pretty damn well. So let's hop into it and jump over to the computer. So I threw together a very, very, very simple CRM base here, just so I can go over the different features of Airtable here. We have our base, which is obviously this database. And then inside of this database, we have a series of different tables or in, you know, if you've used sheets before, they're like different sheets almost. You can see here that all of them kind of look like their own spreadsheets, but they're a lot more than that. And I'm gonna show you guys why. So we have leads, contacts, deals, and calls, right? Calls isn't populated with any information. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment, but we're gonna start with leads. Cool thing about all of this is on the left, you have different views. So you have your grid view, which is what we're looking at right now. You have a calendar view. You have a gallery view, which is like images, little cards and everything like that. You have a Kanban view. So if you're like doing task management, for example, it'd be like to do, in progress, or you know, finished, that type of thing. Then you have a timeline, a list view, which we'll show you in just a second as well, a Gantt view, and then you can add a new section entirely as well. So just to kind of show you how everything works, you can filter here. So if you want to create a list view, for example, we're just gonna say, you know, first message only. That's what we're gonna call this view. It's gonna be a list view. And at the top, it's gonna to show, you can see that it's gonna show all of these records. We can customize these rows so that we can see things like the status, the LinkedIn URL, any notes with that contact, right? Now, I just wanted to show these first message people, right? So we're gonna go ahead and click on filter, we can add the condition, and then we're gonna select the field that we want to filter by. So status is first message. And now it's only going to show us that first message record. So you can do this with basically any type of, you know, database and stuff like that. But what I wanna go over with you guys as well is the different row types. So you can see here that I have like first and last name, status, LinkedIn URL, open URL, which is like a button, um, and then notes, contacts, all that stuff. But you'll notice that each of them has these little symbols at the top, right? What that is, is a field type. So if I click on this little button here, you're gonna see that there's a lot of different field types. So there's single line text, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just text that fills a single line. There's long text. So if you have like a content base and you're writing scripts for content, you can easily use bullet points, formatted text, and you can make it pretty much as long as you want. There's attachments, which is attaching photos, videos, um, check boxes, that's pretty self-explanatory. There's multiple select. So if you have like multiple tags that you wanna give a specific record, you can use this. There's single select, which is exactly what this status is here. Then you have the user. So if there's like a sales rep or something that's assigned to a specific contact, then you can use this, this right here. You have the date, phone number, email. You have URL, which again is pretty sick because you can configure it with different buttons, not just in these grid views, but I'll show you later on what I mean with like interfaces and stuff like that. 
You have numbers, which can be formatted various different ways, currencies, percentages, duration, if you're tracking the time it takes to complete specific tasks, ratings, and then you have formulas. So this is really, really sick because as you know, with sheets, you know, you have to be some kind of wizard in order to actually like link tables together or, you know, make calculations inside of a certain table. But with Airtable, it's very, very, very easy. Uh, I'll go over that with you in just a moment. You have rollups, count, it's not very difficult to do. Then you have record lookups, created time, last modified time, who is created by and who is last modified by, auto numbers, barcodes, and buttons. Buttons is this right here. Those can be configured to like look a certain way and everything like that. But before I get too ahead of myself, now you know that there are a bunch of different, you know, record types that you can add here. You can see that I'm using a couple of them. I have the URL right here, the status of this particular re lead, the open URL. So if I click on this, it's going to open up youtube.com because it's linked. If I go ahead and click on edit this field, you can see right here that it is linked to the LinkedIn URL. So what's going to happen if I click on this is it's going to open YouTube. Not very, not very hard to understand. Notes, and then you have this little record right here. You can see that it's actually linked to another record. So Airtable makes this super easy, uh, especially in comparison to something like Google Sheets. It makes it very, very easy to link other records. And I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by this in just a moment. Over here, you have contacts, right? These are different contacts. I changed the fields a little bit so that it's like emails, phone numbers, the status, is this person a client? Are they qualified? That type of thing. You have notes. Again, you have the LinkedIn, you have the, uh, or the linked lead, I mean. So I'll show you what I mean in just a moment again. Deals and calls. So these are all linked records. You'll notice that linked lead, okay, this is linking to these leads up here. Deals, okay, this is linked to these deals over here. And then calls, all right. This is linked to this calls over here. So essentially, I'm gonna show you guys how this works in just a moment. But first, again, another example of one of those views. So if I just wanna see people who are clients, I can easily filter these views just so uh, I'm not getting that information overwhelmed, right? So that's pretty cool. And then over here, we have deals, pretty straightforward. You'll notice with this, I'm actually using a formula to automatically create the deal name right so this i'll show you guys the internals of this right now you can see that it's first and last name from associated contact so this is actually linked to that thor record if i get rid of this it's going to say and covenant labs okay that's cool now i want to associate this record with a deal or i mean this deal with a contact obviously this deal is with thor so we're just going to go ahead and click on thor and you can see that it automatically populates right there which is really really sick if you want to you know like establish a sales rep you can do that right there and then the calls we don't have anything populated right now but you can see the different fields that i'm using so like a linked contact again we can talk about thor right if it's a you know discovery call or a follow-up call is this call still good to go is it canceled is it rescheduled and there are a bunch of automations you can set up here as well using software like calendly so anytime a call is booked it creates a contact it creates a call and it like links them together um, the call date and time because then you can use these calendar views which is really sick and then you also have the link to the call so you can just join it using that button but i'm going to show you guys also real quick an automation so i set up an automation in here just super simple whenever a record is updated inside of our leads table it is going to create a new record inside of contacts so for example you have the trigger right here the table is leads so that's the the table that it's watching the view doesn't really matter too much and then it's watching one field here it's watching the status field so this automation triggers whenever the status field is updated now here we have some conditional logic so if the status is updated to interested then it proceeds if the status is updated to ghosting or like not interested or didn't respond it's not going to continue if the status is updated to interested it creates a new record inside of contacts so here you can see I have it mapped to the contacts table and then you can map it to specific fields. So the first and last name inside of the contacts field, instead of having to type it all over again, I can actually just map it to the first and last name from the lead that I'm moving over. I can automatically set the status. I can automatically link the lead using the Airtable record ID and I can use the same LinkedIn URL. So I'll give you guys an example of this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys an example of this in real time. Let's just say, I don't know, let's, let's uh, just 
throw some random some random letters in there. I'm not feeling too creative right now. The LinkedIn URL, let's just say linkedin.com. Just make it super simple. Now, when we go ahead and click this and change it to interested, it's gonna take a second to populate. It's gonna take, I don't know, maybe five, 10 seconds to populate, but you're gonna see it appear right here. We already have the first and last name populated. We have the status done and we have the LinkedIn URL. And you can see here now that there is a linked lead. So you can see exactly which lead it's linked to. And it works the same way with calls and deals. So the way it works is pretty simple. In our, in our next video, um, this is like a very, this is a very basic overview of Airtable and what you can do with it, but it goes so, so, so much more in depth. In our next video, we're going to be talking about interfaces. So obviously, you know, looking at these charts and grids, it can get super exhausting um, and it's like not very pretty. It's not very aesthetic. In our next video, we're going to be talking about interfaces, which is where you can build custom dashboards and look at analytics, you know, pie charts, graphs. Um, you can see like like you can link records together and see numbers. So for example, with this CRM, you can see, you know, how many leads booked calls this month. It's just like a very detailed analytics dashboard. And then we're also going to be talking about forms. So forms are very simple and straightforward. You can add form views, um, whether it's, you know, collecting sales data from your sales reps at the end of the day, like how many, how much outreach did you do? How many calls did you book? That type of thing. Or if you're adding a new lead, all that type of stuff. So we're gonna be talking about that in our next video. For now, guys, that's a very basic overview of Airtable. I appreciate you guys watching. If you want this base template for yourself, you can get it down in the description below or the link in the first pinned comment. With that being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content like this from me, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss another upload. And with that being said, I will see you guys later. Peace.